Please be seated. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. These familiar words from the Gospel of John are a popular reading for funerals. In fact, most of us probably hear these words read more often at funerals than we do here in church. Yet when Jesus wrote these words, he was not referring to his death, but to his ascension to the Father God. Jesus was trying to prepare the disciples for his coming absence from them. He knew that after he arose from the dead, that he would return to his Father by ascending into heaven. And so Jesus was sharing with the disciples the reason for his coming departure. It was not to make them sad. Instead, it was a good thing. Jesus was leaving them to go and prepare a place for them. And he describes this place as having many dwelling places that are inside his father's house. And the word for dwelling places is also translated as apartments, or as I would like to translate it even more broadly, as condominiums, since they have been paid for us by Jesus' blood. The word apartments are dwelling places that are inhabited by tenants. And as children of the kingdom, we are not going to be renting a space to live in for eternity. That would defeat the point of Christ's sacrifice. As heirs of the kingdom of God, Jesus left this earth to go and make an eternal home for each one of us. Now our eternal homes will be within the Father God's own place. Just as Jesus lives with the Father, we too will be living with the Father God. Through Christ's preparations on our behalf, our reconciliation with God will be completed. In St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, he describes these, this meeting with the Father God in these words. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I am no only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. In the newly released movie from the book Heaven is for Real by Todd Burpo, we are given a glimpse of what heaven is like right now through the eyes of Todd's son, Colton, when he was four years old. How many have seen that movie? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> go see the movie. <laughs> Especially, have you read the book? Have you read the book? Read the book. <laughs> it is based on sound theology and scripture. And what is so wonderful about the movie, it shows how surprised uh, Colton's parents are at, and family at what Colton is saying after his uh, trip to heaven. And, and going to heaven, even when you're not dead, is scripturally sound because Paul himself talks about someone he knows and the Bible scholars believe he was referring to himself went up into the higher heaven the third heaven the highest heaven and saw such things as could not even be expressed in words well Colton does a wonderful expression in little in words that he has as a four-year-old and it's just beautiful how it comes out from the voice of a child so do go and acquaint yourself with this through the movie or through the, the book. The, the movie doesn't have everything the book has in it, as always, they don't. So start with the book or just go see the movie and then do the book. But please do that. This is something that's exciting you need to see because and read because it's something as a gift to the body of Christ. And one of the things that Colton lets us hear and see is how beautiful 
heaven really is. And as beautiful as heaven is, the scriptures tell us today that the day will come when there is referring to a new heaven and a new earth, not the heaven that Colton was taken up to see, because the new earth and the new heaven are coming after the old earth and the old heaven pass away. And you go, what? What do you mean it's going to pass away? Well, we learn more about this in the other part of the last part of the year, but it's important to understand this part of the scripture of what Jesus is talking about, living within a place and everything and, and being in the same dwelling place as that he's building for us. In the revelation of St. John the Divine, John wrote about this wondrous event when the heaven and earth will, that we know today will pass away and it's going to take place. He writes, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away, and the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. It is of this new Jerusalem that Jesus is sharing with his disciples when he tells them that he's going to prepare a place for them. See, heaven already existed. Jesus came down from heaven and was born in Bethlehem. Okay, so he had to come from somewhere and he came from heaven to come to earth. So now he's leaving to go and prepare a place for them. And he wants to assure them and all who belong to him just how special we are in the eyes of God. We are so precious to the Lord that not only did God give his only begotten son in atonement for our sins, the son of God is preparing a dwelling place where we and God will live together forever. Our eternal home will be God's eternal home. Within the city of God, the new Jerusalem that is yet to come, each one of us We'll have our own special place to live that is even now being created for each one of us who is of God. We all have different tastes. We all have different things that make us happy. Well, Jesus is working on that place for each and every one of us that know and love him right now. So that when we are with God, we will have overwhelming joy. This place, that's why this place is being created, to bring eternal joy to all of us, which is why Jesus states that there are many dwelling places. To give us an idea just how big the New Jerusalem is going to have to be, currently on earth today, there are approximately three billion people who confess to being Christians. Now, while God only knows the exact number, even if only two-thirds of them are true believers in their hearts, that would make the number two billion. And this number only estimates the known living Christians on earth. But Jesus is preparing a place for the whole body of Christ, including all those who are already in heaven, the place that little Colton was allowed to see. Are you with me? Are you following me? Is anyone lost? Okay. So, the, although there have been times in history when there has been meticulous written records of baptisms, there has also been times of great persecution against the church. When a written recording of a baptism would mean a death sentence. The many Christians in the Middle East and throughout the world suffer under such great oppression today. For example, in the news just this past week, 
Did anyone hear about this lady, a 27-year-old pregnant Christian woman, Miriam Yeha Ibrahim in Sudan? Good. We have some of us keeping up with what's going on. <laughs> okay. Well, this young woman faces a death sentence for the crime of apostasy. Under Sharia law, her execution cannot be done until two years following the birth of her child. Although Miriam was raised by her Orthodox Christian mother, her father was a Muslim. And even though her Muslim father left when she was only six years old, under Sharia law, that still makes Miriam a Muslim. Miriam's charges against her also includes adultery because she married a Christian man. And for this crime, the Sharia car court imposed a punishment of a hundred lashes. When Miriam was given the opportunity to recant her Christian faith, she refused saying, I am a Christian and I will remain a Christian. While the story of Miriam from Sudan has made global news, there are many Christians who live every day in fear of their lives that is not going to make the news. Yet Jesus, in his mercy, is preparing a place for all those who believe in him and refuse to deny him before men. For all those who believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And for those of us, in the meantime, who remain on earth until Jesus returns, we have been given the assurance that when Jesus returns to earth, when he's coming back, as we confess every Sunday, that Jesus will take those of us who believe in him with him and we will join with the martyrs and saints of the church to live together in love and harmony where there is no pain where there is no suffering and where sorrow will be no more it is in the presence of the living god that we will know only joy as we live with god through eternity as our Father forever and ever. <laughs>